And Solomon Schechter's role, how did, when did he come to America and how did he get involved in the institution? So Schechter came to America in 1895 on a speaking tour. At the time, he was a, he was a reader of rabbinics at Cambridge. Uh, Schechter was born in 1847 in Romania, was uh, studied in, in Vienna under Jelinek and uh, never actually got a PhD, I don't think. Um, but was a, a, a renowned scholar, famous for the, for the Cairo Geniza in 1897. And there had been talk in America among the, the moderate crowd as early as the mid-1890s to bring Schefter to America to have him head the seminary. But for whatever reason, it didn't work out until 1902 when Cyrus Adler, who was the key figure behind the reorganization of the seminary, Cyrus Adler was not the money man. Cyrus Adler was the intellectual slash organizational man. He um, would go on to become the president of the seminary after Schefter, was the president of the Dropsy College, was a major figure in organizational life. He saw Schefter as the solution to the problem. And he was able to convince him for the right price to come to America as a matter of pikuach nefesh, saving of souls, and American Judaism needs you, Mr. Schefter. And he came to a great fanfare, and served for 13 years until his death in 1915. And in his time, JTS was known as Schechter's Seminary. It was known as that derisively, derisively by the Orthodox crowd and lovingly by the non-Orthodox crowd. And who were the original uh, leading scholars that um, came to, to the Jewish Theological Seminary? So Schechter was quite successful in, in attracting a, a good faculty, a strong faculty, his most important hire was, of course, Louis Ginsburg, who would spend 51 years at the seminary, 1902 to 1953, when he passed away. He was the major rabbinics figure in the world uh, before Saul Lieberman came on the scene in 1940. Uh, and so two generations of conservative rabbis were trained in Talmudics under Louis Ginsburg. He's the author of Legends of the Jews, uh, among many other works. The other important figure was Alexander Marx. Alexander Marx came as a very young man, 25 years old in 1903, to be a professor of history. Marx uh, was, a, was a devout Orthodox Jew. His father-in-law was Rabbi David Zvi Hoffman, the, uh, the great posek of German uh, modern Orthodoxy. No relation to me, although I wish there was, because he's one of my heroes. Um, and Marx was for 50 years, also passed away in 1953, a professor of history and the librarian. His great contribution was he built the JTS library, the greatest Judaica library in the world in its time. Uh, also was Israel Friedlander, professor of Bible, who was uh, tragically killed in 1920 during the Russian Civil War by uh, Ukrainian anti-Semites. Um, and he was a very popular figure because he, he appealed to the young students. He himself was a fairly young man, and was interested in transforming American Judaism and making the modern traditional Judaism in America. Also was Israel Davidson, a professor of, of uh, medieval literature, uh, literature, and importantly, Rabbi Moses Hyamson, who was the rabbi of Or Chaim on 95th Street, a basic New York Orthodox rabbi, was the professor of halacha, of codes, at JTS. And he was a dayan, he was a rabbinical court judge. So it gave uh, sort of bona fides to the halachic learning of the students of that time because Hyamson was their Rebbe in, in halacha. Uh, 